what are these magical geometric shapes called fractals? Why do we need them and how can we create one using C++? In simple terms, a fractal is a geometric object that reveals a detailed structure when you zoom in. Moreover, when you zoom in or out, you see a similar picture. This quality is called self-similarity. And you can zoom in infinitely many times. Fractals are found everywhere in nature. For example, the branching of trees in the structure of snowflakes or in lightning bolts. Unsurprisingly, fractals find extensive applications in computer graphics when you want to create natural-looking textures and landscapes. They are also widely used in medicine to describe complex structures like blood vessels and bronchial trees. Another discipline where you can encounter fractals is finance, where they can be used to model stock prices. On the whole, fractals are found in a myriad of disciplines. There are several ways to generate fractals. For example, some fractals can be described by simple recursive algorithms, while many others can be generated by iterating a function. Iterating a function is a straightforward process, let me explain it. Let's say we have a function f, which maps c to c, where c is the set of complex numbers. Essentially, a complex number can be treated as a point on the plane, so f takes a point and returns another one. We start with some point that sub 0, then we apply f to that sub 0 to get that sub 1. We continue this process iteratively. The Mandelbrot set is one of the most famous fractals, defined by a simple iterative equation that produces incredibly complex and beautiful shapes. Here, f is defined as z squared plus c, where c is a complex number and the starting point z sub 0 is equal to 0. A number c is in the Mandelbrot set if the sequence of points obtained by rating the function f is bounded. A sequence is bounded if it doesn't go to infinity. To break it down, for each complex number c, we iterate the function z squared plus c starting from 0 and obtain a sequence of points. If these points don't go to infinity, we say that the point c belongs to the fractal. I said for each c, but of course most of them are not in the set. If you take a relatively large number, square it, add some constant value and do this repeatedly, we will end up with infinity for sure. So we'll be focused on a very small range of numbers. Also, we are dealing with images that contain pixels. We will map each pixel to a point on the plane. However, know that if our image is 600 by 800 pixels, we will not map this image to the same range of numbers on the plane. As I mentioned before, we are interested only in a small range of numbers, in a small area of the plane. So we will scale this image into a small area and correspondingly assign a small number to each pixel. This is a simple linear transformation. The last question we need to answer before moving to the C++ implementation is how to check if a sequence obtained by iterating a function is bounded. A simple approach is to perform a fixed number of iterations, let's say 200, and check if the magnitude of the number becomes greater than 2. The magnitude of a complex number is defined as the square root of the sum of its squared coordinates. Geometrically, it is a distance from 0 to the point. So, if this distance becomes greater than 2, we say that this point is not in the Mandelbrot set. This check is intuitively sufficient to determine if a point doesn't belong to the set because c is relatively small and the magnitude grows exponentially. A more strict proof involves a simple use of the triangle inequality. Among the libraries we are going to use, there is one that is not very common, called complex. We'll need this library to work with complex numbers. Let's create a class Mandelbrot set. The field image is a representation of a fractal. It specifies the color of each pixel. In the constructor, I resize the image to the number of pixels. Next, we have four variables that determine a range of points C. Remember, we are dealing with complex numbers. Each complex number has real and imaginary parts, which correspond to the x and y axis respectively. These fields specify the size of the image, that is, how many pixels it has. The last variable is the number of iterations. We iterate the function for each point to determine if this point is in the set. If we perform this number of iterations and the magnitude of the number is still less than 2, then we say this point is in the set. Actually, this is not completely true. 
there might be points that don't seem to go to infinity after say 200 iterations but will after say 1000 iterations so here we have a trade-off between accuracy and time efficiency the more iterations we perform for each point the more precise the result will be but at the same time the more iterations we do the more time it requires now let's implement the method render fractal we iterate over all the pixels to determine their color First, I map each pixel to a point on the complex plane, which is a simple linear transformation, a simple compression that I mentioned before. Notice that I'm creating an object std complex, which takes two arguments, the real and imaginary part of the number. Then I perform iterations of the function. Here I need to make a remark. I don't separate pixels into white and black. If you look at the Wikipedia page, you will observe that the fractal is not a two-colored image. It has many more colors. Are they random? Not really. In fact, they represent the number of iterations required for the magnitude of the point to become greater than 2. Essentially, it represents how fast the sequence goes to infinity. In some cases, you iterate 5 times and the number becomes large. In other cases, you need hundreds of iterations to acknowledge that the sequence is unbounded. So, this is precisely what I do here. I save the number of iterations completed for each point. If this number equals the maximum number of iterations, it means that this point is inside the Mandelbrot set. Once we have an array of pixels, we can create a picture. For this, let's create another function, say fractal. It has one parameter, which is the file path where we want to save the picture. If that file path refers to a non-existing file, the file will be created. I will save the image in a binary PGM format, which stands for Portable Gray Map Format. If you want a bright, colorful picture, you need to create a mapping from the number of iterations to different colors and use a format like PPM. The code will be almost the same. In the header of the file, I specify two bytes, P5, which implies a binary format. Then I specify the width, height, and the maximum value for each pixel. Finally, for each pixel, I calculate a color. If a pixel is in the Mandelbrot set, then the number of iterations made for that pixel equals max iter. So this ratio will be 1, and the color equals 255 times 1, which is 255. That is pure white. If the pixel is not in the set, then this ratio will be less than 1, and the color will be black, gray, or something in between. At the end, we shouldn't forget to close the stream. Well, this is for our class. Now we can create an instance of it to render and save the fractal. Here I added a main function. It asks the user to input three numbers, width, height, and the maximum number of iterations. Then it creates the object with three parameters, renders, and saves the fractal. So let's run this code and render a low resolution image. Let's say 800 by 600 and 100 iterations. It rendered an image in less than a second. Let's see the result. It looks gorgeous, but if we zoom in, we cannot see the detailed structure that is the most fascinating aspect of fractals. We can specify higher resolution, more iterations. Let's do this. Say 4000 by 3000 pixels and 200 iterations for each pixel. It will take more time, about 10 to 20 seconds. Now when we zoom in, it looks better, but this is not what people typically do, because creating a fractal with high resolution requires a lot of memory and time. Actually, you should generate a low resolution image, as we've seen it works pretty quickly. Each time you want to zoom in or out, you will need to re render the image. Remember, I declared four variables that specify an area of points on the plane. To render a full fractal, we need this area to include the whole fractal. But when we zoom in, we need a smaller region. This means that we can change these numbers to render a particular part of the fractal. Also, all pixels are independent, for this reason you can easily apply multi-threading to render a fractal even faster. This approach requires creating an interface for the application where you can specify regions. If you want to see how to do that, that is how to zoom in and out, let me know in the comments. Also, there is one limitation to zooming in. In theory, we can do it infinitely many times, but in practice there is a powerful constraint to doing so. I want you to think about this, and you may write your answer in the comments. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I hope you enjoyed this video, if so, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Stay healthy and take care.